So good evening again. It's wonderful to always add to our memorization of the Word of God. And we can do that every Sunday, aside from just studying from the Bible. We also repeat the Word of God by memorizing it. And uh, through last year, since last year we have done that, every time we have a service, we memorize some chapter in any part of the Bible. It's a wonderful uh, uh, way to continue to grow in the Lord. And right now, we uh, continue to study about our theme for the month, Bearing Fruit. And uh, this morning, we started studying about the book of Colossians, Fruit of Making Christ First. So the most important fruit in our lives is to make Christ Jesus first, number one. There are other fruits like witnessing to others, like growing in the faith, like uh, uh, reading the Bible and helping in the different ministries of the church. But the most important fruit of all is to make Christ first, number one in our lives. So that is a question I need to answer and you need to answer. Who is number one in your life today? Every time you wake up in the morning, is Christ the first thought that comes to your mind? Is uh, the Word of God the one that you want to read and then you want to meditate and you want to pray and you want to ask the Lord for His guidance for the day? So what is the first thought that comes to your mind? Or is it, you ask yourself, Masin may nag-text sa ako? Early morning, so you go to the cell phone, giuna mong cell phone. So, ang ginoo, every morning, dapat more than the text, ha? more than the cell phone. So, number one, good ang ginoo. And of course, before you sleep at night, number one, giapon ang ginoo, is the last one with whom you commune. And uh, uh, more again than the cell phone, sa gabi iha. And uh, meditate and think of the word of God and pray, commit to Him. So, for our final message for the month of January concerning bearing fruit, uh, this is uh, in connection with Colossians chapter 2, the fruit of Christian service. We studied this morning Colossians chapter 2. It's a unique uh, writing of Paul because he was not able to go to Colossae anywhere at all during his lifetime. During his three missionary journeys, he never went to Colossae. But here he wrote the book. Because God has a purpose in making him write the book of Colossae. And just, you know, an interesting fact, if you are familiar with the Bible, have you read the, the book of Revelation, chapters uh, 1, uh, 2, 3? It, there is written there uh, the, the letter, the letter, God's letter to the churches of uh, Asia, meaning the the churches right there in uh, in a country uh, that uh, is very important to to uh, revelation and the seven churches there that uh, the lord has uh, has given you know the uh, the book i mean the colossian the colossi the city of colossi is also uh, I mean, located right there within the vicinity of the seven churches of Asia. But the letter was not written to Colossae, but to all the other churches, not like Ephesus and the others there, Philadelphia. But even if Colossae was not written there among the seven churches of Asia in Revelation, or the seven churches of Turkey, that is the Turkey, the country of Turkey today. The book of the New Testament in the letters of Paul, he wrote a letter to Colossae, or one of the churches there in Turkey, where he, we are now studying in connection with the bearing fruit. Uh, who knows, you know, someday you can, you can go work in, in Turkey, no? or in Middle East, and then you could pass by Turkey, and uh, you will be able to see, ah, this is 
one of the church of the places that the Bible is talking about in Revelation, or one of the letters of Paul in uh, in the Bible, addressed to one of the cities in the country of Turkey, Colossae. That's uh, very very interesting. Now for our final message you know, for the month of January, I have been titled my message in Colossians chapter two, fruit of Christian service. When we serve the Lord, we have fruit. And that is uh, beautiful. When you plant a tree, you want to get a fruit. And you want to eat and enjoy the fruit. So, uh, as we look at uh, the book of Colossians chapter 2, we look at a Christ-centered uh, service that the Lord wants us to, to do. And uh, Paul has a message to Colossi the Colossian Christians who were written or addressed by Paul way back many years ago, about 2,000 years ago, 60 to 62 AD. And uh, though he had never been there, he encouraged them in his letter about uh, the fruit of the Christian uh, life, the fruit of Christian service. So three things, just uh, we'll take this up, not very long. But so the first one here, uh, when we think about uh, the Christian service and the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, when uh, we serve the Lord, it is not through human wisdom, but through Christ. So uh, chapter 2, verses 1 to 15. I want you to know what great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, for as many as have not seen me, my face, in the flesh and so he was talking here about the struggles he had while he was uh, in uh, other parts of uh, Asia and later on in Europe when he visited and planted churches there in Greece and some parts of Italy and so he was saying here this important truth that uh, what he wanted to to serve or to show people it's not the human wisdom, but it is who Christ is to his, to his life. So verse 6, as you therefore have received, received Christ the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built in him, built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So the important phrase that I want you to take note is rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the first part here, Paul was telling the Colossian church, you are so rooted in philosophy. I wonder if uh, you are familiar with the word philosophy when you were in college. So you have taken several subjects in philosophy, philosophy one, philosophy two, I think you cannot graduate in college without taking uh, the subjects on philosophy, diva. Right? And uh, well, these are human wisdom, practical things about what famous people have uh, thought deeply about some important topics. And the world, you know, cherishes philosophy. But Paul is saying here, you know, more than philosophy, what is the most important philosophy for the Christian? Here, verse seven. We must be rooted and built up in Christ and established in the faith that you have been taught. So that is the most important philosophy of life. So maybe uh, while you are in college, you are so interested in, uh, you know, wisdom from Aristotle or Plato and all the other famous uh, teachers. And later on in the... In the more modern times, uh, people who have written about philosophy, about how they look to th at the world, how they look at success or failure. So all these are important subjects in college. But here, Paul is saying it never grows old. It's always new. This is the most important philosophy, a Christian philosophy written in the Bible. We must be rooted and built up in Christ established in the faith that as you have been taught so that is the question for me and for you 
Well, after all the things that you have learned in your own profession, whether you are an engineer or a teacher or a commerce graduate or computer graduate, the most important subject the Lord is reminding us about is this. We must walk in Him and we must be rooted and built up in Him and we must be established in the faith. That's why as you come to Cebu to work in your profession, so it's always interesting to work in your profession and be employed and have a salary, you know, good salary at the end of the month. But like uh, uh, many of you have testified, the excitement in working in your profession maybe is six months or maybe at most one year after that everything is you know repetition repetition and you lose you know the thrill and the excitement of the work unless we have the lord and we are excited in him and every saturday and sunday we come to church for study of the word unless you have daily devotion in the word of god and you are rooted and built up in him and established in the faith the rest of the things in the world are temporary and not so interesting well another interesting experience maybe is you know when you fall in love then you get married and then uh, you have that wedding and then you have that honeymoon and then you start living together so maybe the first three years is very exciting when uh, you are newly married and then you have children you have a baby and then you start you know uh, building a house building a home and it's always very ex exciting well but many married people you know after seven years after ten years so nawala na ang feeling uh, pilmina sila honeymoon wala na no pilmina sila excited in love with each other wala na and the thought that you thought before sang uyab baka mo ang akong uyab kwapa gil kaayo and then ang imong uh, boyfriend kwapo gil kaayo the best of the best good why after 10 years nga mag marry ka mo mura wala na ang gwapa ya wala na ang gwapo niya well anything in the world you know it's beauty passes away but this is something that will never pass away if we are walk in him and rooted and grounded in him and we continue to grow in knowing him and serving him that makes everything beautiful because when the lord is beautiful in our minds and in our hearts our wife or husband or children remain beautiful to us also and our profession remains beautiful also because those things are being done you know for his glory and to uh, uh, follow his will so your life is hidden in christ according to our our verses here so as he hid our high our lives are hidden in him so the thrill and the joy are always there in our lives and uh, in verse 6 here here in my outline i wrote you walk in him and you are built up in him that's what i have pointed up to you and uh, there are several things that uh, uh, are important because of him uh, in him is the fullness of deity but bodily in him you are made complete verse 10 in him you are buried by baptism into death and you have died to all the sins in your life and he nailed all those things in the on the cross so our sins are forgiven we have new life and so all these are wisdom of god not based on the philosophy of man and this gives us a deeper joy and deeper understanding of what life is all about now the second thought here that uh, uh, i have written in our notes so when we are faithful to the lord and we do his will we serve him it is not just that it is not philosophy it also not human reasoning or human righteousness but christ so everything that we do in our lives, we always have a reason. Even when we, the course that we took, 
we have a reason. Or maybe the kind of work that you're doing now, you have a reason for that, and uh, you have a, a human insight, insight why you are there, why you are doing it, but the overall thought that uh, Romans chapter 2, I mean Colossians chapter 2 is telling us is this. What is important here is what the, who the Lord is. So we don't judge people according to the verses here by food or drink or festival or new moon or self-abasement or visions or whatever because everything now depends on who Jesus is to us. And uh, interesting part of this uh, verses here in uh, chapter 2, 16 to 23 is we died with Christ. We died to all our worldly desires and our all worldly dreams. We are not self-made men, but whatever we have here are all depends on who Jesus is to us. If you look at uh, uh, your your Bible in the book of Colossians, Paul is mentioning here about legalism. That means things that are, you know, from human reason, legalism. These are all important and reasonable things. But you see, uh, what is the most important is how much you know, how can you can argue, not human reasoning or human righteousness, but what matters in my life and in your life is Jesus and what we are doing with the things that he has taught us. And the third one, the final thought is, it's not just that life is not about philosophy or human reasoning. It is not fleshly efforts, but Christ. You know, a part of a continuation of chapter 2 is here in chapter 3. It talks about uh, our, you know, our fleshly efforts in our lives. Carnal not carnality, but Christ. Now, for example, I let me read you know, chapter 3, verse 1. If then you were raised up with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So, you know, fleshly efforts of our lives. The term of Paul here in Colossians is carnality. So you see, Paul was a lawyer and so the terms that he used here in Colossians are very de deep terms but we can just simplify them. In other words, Paul was talking about you know, being carnal or being fleshly in our efforts, in our attitude, in our language, in our desires, in uh, uh, in our lives right now but he said here the most important thing here is that I died with Christ you died with Christ in all the human desires that you have and uh, our life now is hidden with Christ in God again that's a very very deep uh, insight that Paul is saying here hidden with Christ in God it only means our deeper, deep relationship with him, our deep spiritual life is always there connected with Jesus Christ. And here are, you know, some uh, shallow things that belongs to the flesh or to the carnal mind that he gives here. Verse 5, what are these? You have put to death your members. That means, gipatay mo na mga dotan on nga mga feeling sa imuhaba. What are these? Fornication, uncleanness, passions, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. So, are you familiar with this verse? I do not have to explain this. But if you have been reading your Bible, you are familiar that what Paul is talking about here about, you know, the sins of our sinful man, our sinful flesh. And uh, so, I do not need to uh, explain this again to you verse 6 these things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walk when you live in them 
Now to continue. So, verse chapter 3, verse 8, you put off, added to all these other sins that he has already mentioned, what are these that we should also understand? Anger, wrath. What's the difference between anger and yeah, wrath? Wrath is very, very great anger. So, ang imo kuno kasuko, kun imo na padakon, may imo siya nga wrath. Malis, unsa mga malis, no mga uh, malisya ba ng very evil thoughts about people's motives and your attitude to other people, and then blasphemy. So, filthy language. Now, of course, we don't want that. But sometimes we forget when you go with your professional friends and uh, who are not believers, sometimes you forget that. You are beginning to borrow their language, fil filthy language, out of your mouth. Nine, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. So putting all these things together, the kind carnal things in a human being, you as even as a young professional, you have this, so put them off, he said. And in verse 10, you have now put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to uh, the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, he said, uh, kill all this, put them to death. So just a question for all of us after growing in the Lord all these years. Have you put to death? Napatay mo na ang imong fleshly nga heart? Mga worldly nga mga ambitions? Have you put them to death? That's a very, very difficult language that Paul is giving to us. You don't only have to conquer yourself. You believe Jesus Christ. You be become baptized. You become a member of the church. You attend Sunday school. But he said, after the Sunday school, you go back to home and then to your work. What do you do there? He said, you put to death self. Pat yun mo ang imong sinful diha nga character o ang imong nga sinful nga background maybe from your parents or sinful nga background from the time you have not dedicated everything to the Lord. And now what do you do? You have renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So medyo very deep ang language ni Paul din he. He wants us to grow up and in order to grow up, we have to kill some things and uh, put them to death. And then we have to put a new man inside us to desire spiritual and godly things. So in closing, these last two verses of chapter 3, uh, it says here, You have put on the new man who renewed, is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. 11 where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian, Scythian slave or free but Christ is all and in all so he's saying here the carnal life the fleshly life the fleshly attitude of young people the fleshly attitude of even old people who are not godly who have not grown in their spiritual lives are there. But the Lord said, Paul is saying, remove all that. And in place, you put Jesus Christ in your life. So, to repeat, no, the Lord wants us to have fruit of the Christian service in our lives. So what do you do? You conquer the human wisdom. No more trust in your human ability to be intelligent and to make uh, uh, good arguments and the explanations about anything what, what is the most important is what does the Lord say what does the Lord teach about that another one now so much for all the reasoning that are in our hearts or thinking that we are righteous people but no forget all that but what you should remember is who is Christ in you in the simplicity of the gospel, in the simplicity of the word, is Christ there? Even if he, it does not sound so professional or so high class, 
ang i ang language, but is Christ there in the things that you do? And finally, in our battle of the flesh, because you know, uh, the more we become mature, the more we become professional, the flesh becomes stronger inside us. But how much of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ has conquered our lives so that even the flesh now, we know we put it back. We want to overcome it because we want Christ to triumph in our lives. So putting all these thoughts together, I will uh, summarize. The fruit of Christian service is not human wisdom, not human reasoning and righteousness, and not human effort, but it is following Christ alone. This will make our service truly fruitful. So what are you following now? Now that you have grown in your life here in Cebu, you're now a mature person, a very experienced professional, and you know so many things already. What the Lord has said, the more you know, you sometimes the more you become proud. But oh, the best and the most important thing is that the more you know, the more you follow Christ, the more you know, you become more humble, and then uh, the more uh, rank that you have achieved, or the more uh, 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 the more salary maybe that you have now gained after all these years, the result will be more service for the Lord and more obedience to Him. So that is the point that. Uh, I want to express to you in this whole month of January, bearing fruit. And bearing fruit beyond, you know, uh, advancing in our office or advancing in our profession. The most important fruit is the fruit of Christian service and the fruit of being Christ-like and the, the fruit of being humble and just following the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the most important fruit of all. And as uh, we continue serving for the new year, I hope you and I will desire that. The fruit of who Christ is to you and me. And so the, the rest of the blessings will just follow. And the, the rest of the wonderful things that we desire in our profession, in our lives, will be multiplied as we grow in humble, humble obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that the kind of life that you have now? Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for this uh, summary of what we have studied for the month of January. And so may we we'll have that important desire of all, the desire to follow you and obey you. Because as we do that, all the rest of our learnings and the, Lord, the rest of our advancement will be truly achieved and will give us joy and success. So help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor.